Additional Science Chemistry, Topic 1, Atomic Structure and the Periodic Table. We're going to be looking at the structure of the atom, defining atoms, relative atomic mass, the periodic table and electron shells. An atom is made up of three different particles, protons and neutrons, which are together in the central nucleus, and electrons, which are in shells or energy levels around the outside. Now, this diagram is not drawn to scale. In fact, the nucleus is absolutely tiny compared to the size of the whole atom. You need to know the charge and mass of each of these particles. Protons and neutrons are the same size. We say they have a relative mass of one. Compared to these, electrons are tiny with a relative mass of 1,840 times less, or almost negligible. Protons have a positive charge, electrons have a negative charge, and neutrons have no charge. Atoms are usually found with no overall charge, which means they must have the same number of positive protons and negative electrons. We represent atoms using a symbol with two corresponding numbers. Here we have an element of um, an atom of sodium, symbol Na. The bottom number is the atomic number, which tells us the number of protons. The top number is the mass number, which tells us the number of protons and neutrons combined. It is the number of protons that determines what element the atom is. For example, if an atom has 11 protons, it will be sodium. If an atom has 8 protons, it is oxygen. However, there can be different versions of an element that have the same number of protons, but a different number of neutrons. These are known as isotopes. Here we have some different isotopes of oxygen, oxygen 16, oxygen 14 and oxygen 18. When you look at the periodic table, you will see that not all mass numbers are whole numbers. For example, chlorine has a mass number of 35.5. This is because the number actually being stated is the relative atomic mass. It accounts for the fact that there are different isotopes of chlorine, some with a higher mass number and some with a lower mass number. The relative atomic mass is an average of these, and you need to be able to calculate it given certain data. Here we are told that there are two types of isotopes of chlorine. 75% of them are chlorine 35 and 25% of them are chlorine 37. To find the relative atomic mass, you need to multiply the percentage by the mass number for one and add it to the percentage multiplied by the mass number for the other. So 75% times 35 plus 25% times a mass number of 75 gives a relative atomic mass of 35.5. The periodic table is a chart showing all the elements that exist. The elements are arranged in order of atomic number and are positioned in specific rows. These rows are called periods. Each element then falls into a particular column or group. There are, uh, these are numbered across the top, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 0. The elements in each group all have similar properties to one another. You need to know that there is a dividing line that starts underneath boron and moves to the right and downwards like a staircase. To the left of this line, all the elements are metals. To the right are all the non-metals. The periodic table in this format was devised by Dmitri Mendeleev in 1869. He firstly ordered the elements by relative atomic mass. He then adjusted the layout based on the properties of the elements, which created the groups and periods. By doing this, gaps appeared where Mendeleev predicted an element should be and in time these elements were all discovered. You need to be able to describe the arrangement of electrons in the shells for the first 20 elements in the periodic table. The basic rules are that electrons fill the shells closest to the nucleus first. The first shell can have a maximum of two electrons and the next shells can each have up to eight electrons. Let's have a go at magnesium. If we look in the periodic table, we find out that it has an atomic number of 12. This means it has 12 protons and therefore also has 12 electrons. So we start off by writing the symbol Mg in the centre so we know what kind of atom it is. We then draw the first shell and fill this with two electrons using either crosses or dots. The next shell can have up to eight, so that takes us to a total of 10. And then two more in the third shell gives us our 12 electrons. 
As well as drawing it on a diagram like this, we can also write the arrangements of electrons numerically as 2.8.2. .2. Finally, one cool thing to note is that the group number in the periodic table tells you how many electrons are in the outer shell. Magnesium is in the second column or group and therefore has two electrons in its outer shell.